Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of Optifine for Noobs. Now if you've seen my previous videos in this series in the Blockbench for Noobs videos, you'll kind of know where this is going. Rather than this one focusing on Blockbench and modelling, this one's going to be focused on Optifine. There has been some previous mixing between these two things in my other videos, but from now on what I'm going to do is any tutorial videos that relates to Minecraft is all going to fall under the For Noobs series and then whatever practice or programs applicable such as Blockbench, Optifine etc. In this case it's Optifine for Noobs. Next time it might be Blockbench for Noobs. In the future, who knows, maybe it's Java for Noobs. I mean, it, that's not going to happen because I don't know how to code, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, as you can see, we've got our banner up there. We're on Java version 1.14.4. I know the Java 15 version has just come out with the Buzzy Bees update, but Optifine and other things are not supported in that version as of yet. Until it is, we'll be sticking with 14. So, connected textures. What is a connected texture? Well, it's probably one of those show don't tell things. So let's jump into Minecraft and I'll show you. So here we have the standard panes of glass. These are the non-Optifine version. You'll see that these have a very sort of dirty looking tiling where you can see the edges of each block. And if I just jump into Optifine, you'll see the exact same panes of glass, but they have now lost their edges. And that's because what you're looking at here is connected textures. So the way that this works is that we have a properties file that is reading the blocks next to this block. And essentially this one is set up to say, if the block next to this pane equals another pane, remove the edges or replace it with this texture or this model. It's at this point I would highly recommend that you check the description and look for the Optifine CTM properties file that I've linked down there. It has a whole host of information and there's really a lot of things you can do with these CTMs and I'm going to show you a couple of these today. So the first connected textures method I'm going to be covering is CTM compact. Now the reason this is compact is it takes a small number of texture files, five in total, and essentially lets them do what previously around 47 or so tiles used to do. But let's stop staring at this glass and look at what I actually mean. So here we have spruce planks. Look perfectly normal, nothing going on here. But if I place it down, boop, and you'll see that this spruce plank looks very strange. Well, that's because it's having a CTM texture applied to it. And if I just turn around and look here, you'll see that we've got a whole bunch of these. We've got one for a single block, one for multiple connected blocks, one for a square block where you'll see that we've got no border in the middle here, one that's got a ring shape where we've got border around every part of it, and then we've got a cross shape here as well where there's borders on every single edge. It's probably easier if I just place some blocks and show you how this works. So there we have one, and if I put one down beside it, you'll see that the textures connect as the name would suggest. If I keep doing this, you'll see that it just keeps connecting. It doesn't matter which way I place these blocks, they are going to just connect, and the pattern and the border that I've created is going to just follow that. And if I just create a full wall here, you'll see that the border is only around the edge and the middle block is the default spruce. Made a little bit of a mess here, but as you can see, it's a pretty looking mess. So let me show you how we do this. You recall that I said that this is the CTM compact method and the original method was the CTM method, which is this one here. This graphic here shows you with the green outlines, the edges of your texture. So if you wanted to recreate what you just saw in game using the original method, you would have to create 47 textures to allow them to connect the way that you just saw. Now, the only reason I could think that you would possibly still want to use this is if you had very specific needs for your textures when they were built in a certain direction or you had specific details that you only wanted to show during certain parts of the edges that they were shown or the connected textures that were available. This template right here, all 47 blocks, is easily replicated with this one right here. And I use this to create this texture. So here's how we do it. This right here is the original Spruce Planks texture. Absolutely nothing about this at all has been changed. It's completely vanilla. What I did is I took this and then I replicated it into a 3x3 block, this, and then I created a border around it just by darkening some of the blocks and making it look a bit more like dark oak. Then, using the CTM compact template right here, 
I then copied and pasted and edited each of them so that they matched this. Now the way that this works is the green outlines that you see around the edge here, this is the edges of my texture. So for tile zero here, here's what it looks like. So what you'll see is I've taken my border and I've put it all the way around the inside of the texture here. Tile one, there, there's nothing here at all. And it may seem a bit confusing at first, but what it simply means is just the standard texture. So there's just the spruce planks texture. If you were working with a different texture or your own texture, you would put the part that you want to show up in the middle of it. So if you had a three by three block that looked like this, the middle part would be the block that's right here in the middle. Okay, tile two, you'll see that there's a green edge on the left and the right. And I have tile two right here. We've got the borders on the left and the right. Tile three is much the same, except they're at the top and the bottom. There you have it. Tile four is another strange one where you're not really quite sure what to make of this, at least I wasn't. But here's what it's actually looking for. It's looking for your center texture with the inside corners of your blocks. Right, to back end game and let's have a look here. So you'll see that I've made this cross pattern and if I get quite close here, you'll see the outline appear around this block. And you'll see it right here. We've got these four corners here in the middle of our cross. That is what that texture is used for. So one very important thing that we have to clear up immediately if I just open up my CTM properties file that I've got a copy of here, you'll see that at the start here, it gives you some information about the pack and explicitly tells you that anything that you want to do has to be in the Optifine CTM folder. Now, if I just go to my file structure here, you'll see we've got the usual resource pack name, assets, Minecraft, Optifine, CTM. And then in this case, I've just got one called wood, spruce planks, and here are my files. This one here is not needed. I'm just leaving this in the pack in case you want to use it as a reference for any future changes or packs you might want to make. And we have the spruce planks properties file, which I've already got open right here. And this is all that I had to do to get this working. Let's have a look here. So we've got the method and then we have a list of methods here. I'd advise you to have a read of these. There's quite a few of them. You can do a lot of things with connected textures, but for this instance, I'm just going to focus on the ones that we're doing in the video. CTM compact, as I said, takes the zero to 46 method previously and compacts it down to a simple five tile format. And what this is doing is it's using the textures and blending them together so that we get parts that we've not actually made. So if I look at one of these corners here, you'll remember that I haven't actually made a texture that looks like this corner. What it's doing is it's blending together parts that I have made to get this effect rather than me having to do it all individually which is pretty damn cool. So to replicate this, you just need a properties file in the same folder as your texture files here. I've got method equals ctm underscore compact, tiles zero to four, that's these tiles right here, match blocks spruce underscore planks. And that's just telling the game that if the block beside it matches spruce planks, then use the ctm compact method. So hopefully all that makes sense. Remember, as always, check the description down below. There'll be a download link for this resource pack and you can experiment with this and learn more from it from you like. But I would always advise that you check the Optifine properties documents, which are also linked below, as they are the source of all information when it comes to this. And if, as always, you can always ask me in Discord. Back in game, and you may have already noticed this, but I've got something else down here and I've got some custom magma blocks that I've created. So this is using another connected textures method, but rather than having the texture on the block itself, what it's doing is it's overlaying texture onto the neighbor blocks. To make it clear what's actually happening here, I'm just going to break a block here and I'm going to place my magma block in the center and watch what happens to the surrounding blocks here. You'll notice that they've been overlaid with this extra piece of the texture. And like the CTM compact method, you'll see that they all connect in the same way, except the texture is overlaying neighboring blocks. Now this method is really good if you want to make blocks transition, because what we can do is we can tell this that it should only do it when it's beside certain blocks. So for example, if you wanted to make it so that this only happened when you put a sand block down next to a grass block and it showed some sort of sandy transition overlay between them, that's entirely possible and it wouldn't work with any other blocks unless you told it to. So this one requires a little bit more work, but let's jump back into Windows and I'll show you how to do this as well. So my magma block, it's a bit of a strange hybrid between Optifine features and standard resource pack features and that not only am I adding overlays, I'm also replacing the original magma block itself. 
Now, if you're not really sure how to do that, I do go over it in previous videos, but essentially what you do is in your resource pack folder, you want to match the file structure and file name. So in this case, we're in assets, Minecraft, textures, block, and then we have magma, which is this right here. And the reason it's so long is this is actually an animated texture. Again, if you want to know more about animated textures, check the previous videos. I'm not going to cover it in detail here. You'll see that I've got some other messy files in here as well. That's just stuff that I've been messing around with. But the most important thing is you need to know is that I have replaced the original magma block. Going back up the file structure, Minecraft, Optifine, CTM. I had a bit of an issue with this where I couldn't get it working and I was told that if I put these in underscore overly, it might work. And there seems to be some mixed results with this. So if you're doing this and it doesn't seem to work, try doing this here by putting it in a folder called underscore overlay. Seems to be a bit of a mixed result within the community. So I would advise try it with and without it if you're having issues and see what works for you. But in here, I've got magma block. And then you'll see it's quite a bit different here. And this template here is the one we're using for the overlay structure. So the first thing you probably notice is that we have roughly three times as many textures we need to make for this one compared to the CTM compact. And this time the green outline actually represents the edge. If you look here, I'm just going to grab this one right here, number three, and drag it into Photoshop. Zoom all the way in. And you'll see what we've got is a 16 by 16 texture, mostly transparent, I'll just zoom in on number three. You'll see that the edge that's highlighted is the right side and the bottom side here. And I have replicated my texture on the right side here and the bottom side. Now, the reason for this is because, as I said, this is an overlay texture. So it's not changing the texture on the block itself. It's changing textures outside of the block. If I just go back in game, you remember how I showed you that these textures are overlaying the grass here? That's why we have a transparent section on the textures this time, so that we get our part of the texture, but it doesn't totally interfere with the original. You could make your overlay as big or as small as you liked. You could make it take up most of the accompanying blocks if you liked. It's totally your artistic choice how you want to make this work. Exactly like CTM Compact, you just have to make sure that you create all your texture files and make them match this template right here. So you'll see that zero is this top left corner, which is what I've got here. Uh, let's see, number 10, this is this top right corner here. So number 10 right there matches it exactly. You just have to match your texture overlay to all of this, match the template. As simple as that. Now let's look at the properties file for this because it is a bit more complicated. So I'm going to start down here at Connect Tiles. So what I'm essentially telling Optifine is that my source block, where the overlay originates from, if you will, is magma. Now the reason it's magma instead of magma block is that we're referencing the actual texture file name itself. You remember this file right here? You'll see that it's called magma. This is what we're referencing in this properties file here. So for example, if I wanted to do sand, as I said before, I would then want to make sure that I put sand here which matches the name of the texture file. So let's go over the rest of these. Match blocks. This is us telling it that anytime our magma is connected with one of these blocks, it should overlay the texture. So you can specify as many or as little blocks in here as you like. Usually you would want to do stuff that makes sense. So for me, I had done dirt, grass block, grass path, stone, cobblestone, nether rack, soul sand, and gravel. So back in game again, you'll immediately see that this magma is not overlaying the stone bricks or the mossy bricks, but it is overlaying on the grass. That's because I have not defined in my properties file that it should be overlaying these blocks. So it just ignores it. I just do this around the outside here. It becomes very obvious that my properties file is working exactly as intended because it's only overlaying the blocks that I have told it to overlay. The next part's fairly self-explanatory. Method, overlay. It says it right here. Overlay for block transitions. Use these 17 tiles, 0 to 16, which we've got right here. Tiles equals 0 to 16. Layer equals cutout. And if I check layer options here, we've got cutout, transparent texture without MIP maps. Now, to be honest with you, I haven't experimented with cutout, mipped, or translucent, and I'm not entirely sure what MIP maps are at this point. But if you do, you know, please leave a comment and let me know, because I'd be interested to find out. It's just not something I've had to look into as of yet, so I haven't needed to know. And that pretty much covers how an overlay works. We've got our source tile down here. We've got the blocks that it should overlay, the method, which is overlay, the layer style, which is cut out, so we get our transparency, and our tile definition right here, which is mapped to these 17 files. 
And then back in game, we've got some pretty cool textures. We've, we've got all of our CTM compact spruce wood here with a sort of dark planks edge to them. And then we've got a pretty cool transitional magma block here that sort of blends in a bit and looks like it's maybe burning the nearby blocks. So everyone, I think that's more than enough for one tutorial. There are other methods for CTM, but these are the two most common ones. There are other ones where you can force it to only be vertical, only horizontal. As I said, check the properties file, there's a lot more information in there. And if there's any other tutorials you guys want me to cover, whether it be Optifine, Blockbench, etc, let me know, because I might just do it. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you found it helpful. Please remember to like and subscribe, I'm really hoping to hit 500 subs before the end of the year, we're getting pretty close now, so if you can help out in any way, I would really appreciate that. And I'll see you next time. Have a good one.